My name is Gabrielle Saja, and I'm a physical therapist, Alexander Technique teacher, and holistic educator. I teach in schools and offer workshops for faculty, students, and their parents. I also help young people and adults in my private practice in Washington, D.C. Today, I am going to discuss the intersection between developmental reflexes and the Alexander Technique with the hope that this information is helpful for Alexander teachers, educators, parents, and healthcare professionals. I'll define what developmental reflexes are and why they are important, introduce to you the Moskatova method of neurosensory motor reflex integration, discuss the similarities of the Moskatova method and Alexander technique, I'll share some of my practical experiences and then suggest possibilities for how Alexander Technique teachers and reflex integration practitioners can work together. In the field of the human physiological sciences, there are a multitude of reflexes. A very general definition of a reflex is an involuntary reaction of the body to a stimulus. Today, I'm going to address only the developmental reflex, the cornerstone of which is a whole body movement response. A developmental reflex is an involuntary movement pattern governed by the central nervous system in response to tactile, motor, visual, and sound stimuli. These reflexes are the foundation for human growth and maturation also called primitive or primary reflexes, these movement patterns are associated with developmental milestones such as crawling, walking, speaking, and hand-eye coordination. It's beneficial for the Alexander Technique community to be knowledgeable about developmental reflexes because they can impact and in some cases have a profound influence on a child's ability to participate in school and learn Alexander principles. These reflexes are largely sourced in the non-conscious parts of the brain. So if they interfere with daily life, constructive conscious control of our behavior can be quite limited. Developmental reflex motor patterns are detectable in utero. Some activate during the birth process some are active at birth, and others emerge during the first year of life. In healthy development, they follow a sequence of emerging, being active, and then integrating. This process should be complete by age two. During these first years of life, developmental reflexes can be elicited with certain kinds of stimuli. It is expected that as an infant grows and matures, these reflexes will not respond to these stimuli. They become integrated as the foundation for human growth, maturation, and protection. A few words about vocabulary. Different schools of thought and disciplines use different language. For example, when a reflex movement pattern manifests involuntarily, with a certain kind of sensory or movement stimulus, it can be referred to as present, unconditioned, immature, retained, active, or not integrated. When the same kind of stimulus does not result in its corresponding movement pattern, the reflex is considered not present, conditioned, inhibited, mature, inactive or integrated. Today I will refer to these reflexes as being integrated and not integrated. A commonly known reflex is the grasp reflex. If you put your finger in a newborn's hand it will automatically grasp your finger. I'm sorry to say this is not because it likes you. This is a developmental reflex that is not yet integrated and not governed by conscious control. Within six to 12 months, it is expected that the baby will be able to choose what it wants to grasp and hold on to. 
This ability to make a conscious choice indicates that the reflex is integrated. When a reflex is integrated, the baby has the freedom to make choices about how it explores the world for the purposes of learning and growing. Therefore, it can choose what toy to pick up and whether or not to hold a parent's hand. This reflex is the basis for gross motor coordination, fine motor skills, hand-eye, hand-mouth, and hand-head turning, as well as hand-leg coordination. Interestingly, the grasp reflex is also associated with hanging in there in the sense of persevering in challenging situations. If for some reason this reflex is not fully integrated, a person may struggle with fine motor skills such as tying shoes and writing, hand and finger fatigue from an insufficient or excessive grip on a pen, difficulty using utensils, and perhaps even speech and communication skills. Now I'd like to tell you about the Moskatova method of reflex integration. Dr. Svetlana Moskatova, first trained as a clinical psychologist specializing in traumatic stress, was called to the scene of the 1989 catastrophic train accident in Ufa, Russia, in which 500 people, nearly 25% of whom were children, were killed. These trains, full of families on their way to holiday vacation, and children on their way to camp were destroyed by an explosion of a gas pipeline. Dr. Moskatova was presented with a crisis much like F.M. Alexander was with his voice. She was passionate about meeting the challenge of helping the surviving children, most of them badly burned, recover from this trauma when standard therapy was not working. Drawing on what she understood about child development and the importance of touch, developmental movement, and Vygotsky's theories of reflex influences, Dr. Moskatova was successful in reaching children with simple movement and tactile activities. She would literally find some tiny areas of skin that had not been burned to make gentle contact. Despite the magnitude of their trauma, these children recovered emotionally and physically faster than expected. This experience was a defining moment for Dr. Moskatova. Moskatova Neurosensory Motor Reflex Integration, also called MNRI, has evolved as a profound means of helping children and adults maximize their full potential regardless of the level of function of where they start and with which they live their lives. Many of the children and adults who benefit from MNRI are considered neurodiverse. This is a broad term encompassing anyone who may have coordination and speech difficulties, are on the autism spectrum, are born with any level of developmental delay or disability, have exceptional skills in one area but struggle in other parts of their lives, or behavioral issues. Addressing these reflex movement patterns help people who have experienced trauma and can also be useful for awakening lost movement capacity due to musculoskeletal injury, weakness, or misuse. What distinguishes MNRI from other interventions is guided intentional movement through various stages of the reflex pattern. If a reflex is not integrated or the neural pathways are weakened due to stress or trauma, splinter skills or compensatory skills become the foundation for daily activities. The problem with this is that these compensatory skills are unreliable during future stress. An integrated reflex serves a protective function and remains available to support survival when danger threatens and also serves as the foundation for higher level, skillful, and intentional motor activity. 
A Moskatova practitioner uses very gentle touch to guide a person into a specific movement with minimal effort, only 20%. I tell my students that we are waking up existing neural pathways, not working out muscles. What I find exciting is that both training to be a practitioner and the integration procedures are accessible to health professionals and educators, but most importantly, parents. Repatterning exercises are very simple to carry out. In fact, many parents take the professional training courses simply to help their own children. There are many similarities between Alexander Technique and Moskatova Method. An understanding that a safe, positive environment is necessary for learning. A co-creative partnership is established with the student with activities that foster the joy of discovery. The emphasis is on building the strengths of a person rather than a problem to be fixed. We seek to transform negative anchors unhelpful habits and faulty sensory awareness into positive experiences and behavior. We embrace our understanding that movement, cognitive, and emotional development are interdependent. Both approaches employ a hands-on movement-based sequence. Dr. Moskatova has synthesized scientific principles and real-life clinical experiences to create an innovative way to help people. Just like Alexander, she had a burning question and a passion for solving a critical problem. Both of these disciplines require rigorous training of practitioners. These two approaches share the same goals, self-regulation, embodied self-awareness, and self-compassion. I was introduced to Moskatova Method in 2014 because of an injury and found it extremely helpful. It became clear to me that this work might help my Alexander students and physio patients. Many years ago, one of my students, Joan, a woman in her 60s, had osteoarthritis in one of her hips and had fallen several times. We started with Alexander Technique lessons to help remedy the long-term compensatory strategies due to pain and lack of strength. Despite improved strength and many lessons prior to and after a hip replacement, guided sitting and standing remained very difficult. Joan's fear was palpable and increased to the extent that we stopped because it was counterproductive. Her fear response seemed outsized in relation to her physical capacity. One day she confided in me that her early family life was characterized by a pervading sense of having the rug pulled out from underneath her. It is possible that the collision of her family history experiences with her recent history of falls activated the fear paralysis reflex rooted so deeply in the limbic system, hijacking Joan's ability to use her conscious thinking to embody Alexander principles. The fear paralysis reflex is the freeze part of the fight, flight, or freeze response to stress or danger. Had I known about reflex integration at that time, I could have helped Joan decrease her fear response increase her self-confidence, and trust her body. Ten-year-old Olivia was referred to me recently because her mom notices, and so does Olivia, that she has difficulty handling a fork and knife, does not like to tie her shoes, and says she feels funny when she waves her arm to greet someone. She is bright, communicative, has the energy of three puppies, and is constantly asking questions. Olivia has trouble, however, harnessing her energy and insights. Her mom notes that there has been a lot of family stress in the past several years, 
and there was also some birth trauma for which Olivia spent a week in the neonatal ICU. A reflex assessment indicates that several developmental reflexes are not fully integrated. Interestingly, when she got on my table, she said, my tummy feels hard when I lie on my back and soft when I lie on my tummy. I started working with Olivia on her tummy first so she could feel safe. After guiding Olivia through some simple repatterning movements that were easy for her, in short order, she actually asked to roll onto her back to do something new. Olivia and her mom do a home program together, and Olivia is learning the ready list so she can use Alexander principles to help her manage her energy and communication skills. The stories of Pat and Olivia suggest the beneficial intersection of how Alexander Technique and the Moskatova Method can help people in a holistic and thorough manner. In both the classroom and private lessons, Alexander teachers are in a unique role, different from a parent, teacher, or healthcare provider. With our kinesthetic and specialized perspective, we may notice a child struggling, perhaps in subtle or quiet ways, in classroom, academic, or Alexander activities. It might be that there are interferences from reflexes not completely integrated. In this sense, our presence helps provide a more complete picture of how a child engages with others in relation to the environment and most importantly, themselves. It's also important for Moskatova Method practitioners to know about Alexander Technique. Alexander principles empower a child with agency, self-awareness, and self-compassion, a critical life skill set that guides the student towards an even higher ability, building upon the foundation of strongly integrated reflexes. I hope this brief introduction to Moskatova Neurosensory Motor Reflex Integration inspires you to learn more about the means whereby developmental reflexes serve as a necessary foundation for human growth on all levels. While this method is one of many pathways, I find the Moskatova method to be a wonderful complement to Alexander Technique for both children and adults. Do remember that none of us is fully integrated all of the time. It's simply good to know that there are many ways to help students of all ages, each other, and ourselves grow, thrive, and live to our fullest potential. Thanks so very much for your time and attention. I look forward to hearing from you with your thoughts and questions. <laughs>